Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and if you have been following my channel for a while you probably have noticed that uh, it's uh, it's been quite some time since I last uploaded a video and as my last video which I think was from August uh, was about it was about you know mental health and being in sort of a not not the best kind of place um, and uh, well that's the reason why I haven't uploaded any videos uh, for such a long time but I have been painting dragons and that always lifts the spirits. <laughs> so, um, so, and I've been getting quite a lot of questions about how I do those uh, sort of stained glass uh, looking um, uh, wings for my dragons. So I decided that that was uh, a nice excuse to get back into making uh, a tutorial. So I hope you all enjoy this one. So I start off with a model that's been primed using the Wraithbone spray from Citadel. And then I use some contrast paints. This one is Volopus Pink and I use that just uh, on the edge. And then I use the uh, lovely Griffhound Orange. And I, uh, as, I can, as you can see, I just do sort of a quick wet blend with the contrast paints. They're really, really uh, easy to use for that kind of stuff. It doesn't get as smooth as some uh, you know, wet blending techniques uh, will allow you to get. But uh, for uh, this sort of purpose, it's completely ideal. And then for the middle part of the wing, as you can see, I use uh, some uh, yellow uh, contrast paint and this one is Yandan Yellow. So just a nice quick wet blend. It takes, uh, I don't know, a minute or so per <laughs> sort of section of the wing. Once it's all dry, I take another contrast paint. This one is Pterodon Turquoise and I use it to, um, to sort of draw and outline of each of the scales on the wings and I only use the Pterodon turquoise here on the parts of the wings that I want to uh, paint pink later on so uh, this serves as a, a sort of a rope map for me. Then I take some snake bite leather also a contrast paint and this I use to uh, to draw the uh, draw the scales on the orange and yellow part of the wings and uh, this I will paint over this at a later stage, but uh, as I said, this is sort of a roadmap, so this makes it easier for me when I'm going to be filling out the scales with uh, with another paint uh, to see what I had uh, intended and what I had in mind. Um, I don't think this is strictly necessary, but uh, I like I like doing this and sort of uh, making sure that I like the way it looks and uh, being able to correct some things that perhaps I don't think look quite as good as I wanted it to. Then for the uh, pink part of the scales, I take a bit of uh, Cyclam Red. This is a neon pink powder um, that I got from PK Pro. And I mix that with a bit of pink candy ink from uh, Green Stuff World. And uh, I don't know if this is the way you're actually supposed to be using pigments, but that's the way I love using them. And it gives so such a nice vibrant pink. And uh, once I use it here as a paint, I have just mixed it with a tiny bit of white as well, because I think it gives, uh, uh, it makes it a little bit easier somehow to, uh, to paint with. And as you can see, this is sort of like paint by numbers. I, I really just uh, fill out each of the scales uh, completely with the, uh, with the pink paint. Um, it's, it's not a difficult process, but as you can probably imagine, it is, it is pretty time consuming as, I mean, this whole painting process actually really is. Then for the orange part of the wings, I do more or less the same thing. I take some uh, lovely uh, in fluor uh, orange and, and um, it is actually really bright orange, but the camera somehow doesn't really uh, pick it up. I don't know why. Um, but it is a nice bright orange, I promise you. And I, I mix that with some uh, yellow ink. Uh, this is just a Liquitex uh, yellow ink. And uh, mix it together and get this nice uh, vibrant uh, orange color that I can use. And as you can see here again, it's uh, it, it's just, uh, you know, the whole paint by numbers thing. Um, and I mean, it can get sort of repetitive, but it's also really relaxing. Uh, I mean, I'm not the uh, yoga or meditation kind of uh, person, but uh, I think this this works almost uh, almost like that for me. Um, while actually, you know, also giving me a finished creative result at the end of the day. Um, and as you can tell, it, it looks really yellow here, but it is, in reality, it's really 
really bright orange. So uh, yeah, I should probably work on my camera settings or something, but I know nothing about uh, technology. So this is uh, this is definitely as far as I, uh, I mean, <laughs> this is as far as my abilities go. <laughs> Next up, I take my pink paint, the one with the uh, all the lovely uh, neon pigment, and I mix a little bit of uh, white in it uh, again, and then I use that to highlight the scales. And I try to put uh, most of the uh, of the uh, highlights on the um, top of the scale, so where you have the uh, the top of the wings. Um, I mean, <clears throat> it's not strictly necessary because. Uh, I'm <sighs> I'm not trying to get a realistic look or anything. I just like it to look a bit co like coherent, like there is uh, some sort of reason behind this madness. I don't know if it translates actually onto the model, but uh, yeah, uh, that, that's uh, that, that's the look I'm going for anyway, that uh, you have uh, the highlights mostly on top. On the really small scales, as you can probably tell, it's a bit difficult to do, but uh, I mean, the overall look, uh, of, of those highlights is, uh, is something I, I quite like. Then I go over the exact same process on the orange scales, only using uh, yellow. This is uh, Flash Kids Yellow from, uh, from Citadel, uh, but I think any sort of uh, nice, you know, uh, basic yellow will work just fine. And uh, that is probably the, um, uh, the case for most of these paints. I don't... Uh, I, I don't have any sort of uh, religious affiliation with any of my paints. I use whatever works, and if you find something that you like, just, I mean, go with it. I, I think this technique will work uh, with all sorts of paints, um, as long as you have some, you know, uh, darker colors and some highlights, then you're good to go. And lastly, uh, for the last highlight here on the pink parts, I have mixed uh, another bit of white uh, in with the uh, in with the pink, and then I just try to apply it relatively sparingly just to the top of the scales. And uh, the reason why I'm trying not to go overboard, which is really hard for me because I like really sharp contrast, so I'm always tempted to just edge highlight the whole thing in white. Um, uh, but I try to stop myself because I do not want this to be like a pastel uh, look. I want it to look uh, really bright and, and striking. And for the last highlight on the on the orange and yellow, I use a bit of Wraithbone. I could probably also just use a bit of white, but uh, I would like to make sure that there is a sort of um, a, a difference in the tone between the pink and the uh, and the orange, so that the pink has this sort of sort of sharp cold uh, highlight to it, while the uh, yellow is a bit warmer in, in tone. Um, but I mean, if you only have a white, I, I think it would work just fine as well. Then I grab my pterodon turquoise and I, I outline every single scale uh, using that. And um, as you can tell, that that means that the uh, the snake bite leather outline that I did in the beginning uh, will now completely vanish. It won't be visible at all. And um, so so that's what why I'm saying at the beginning. It, it I mean that's not strictly necessary, but I like it as sort of a guideline to where I want to put the orange and where I want to put the pink scales. Um, this is also a little bit well very time consuming but i really like um the result with these really sh you know sharp clearly defined scales each individual individual scale really um stands out and pops if you think this is uh, like too drastic of a look um with the uh, Teraton turquoise uh, on the orange parts you could perhaps just go with a, a darker brown or something then uh, lastly on the pink I use uh, again Volopus pink, uh, the contrast paint, and I um, I put just a tiny dot at the bottom of each scale uh, to make it uh, just um, a little bit richer in color. Originally I had intended to stop here without adding the, the last bit of contrast paint, but I thought it looked a little bit too pale or a little bit too boring somehow. There wasn't enough texture on each scale, so that's why I decided to add this last bit of uh, of color in, in, 
in in the bottom of uh, of each scale and uh, i really like the results i did not do this on my big dragon these are wings for um the uh, the dragon riders for the stormcast and uh, i kind of wish I, I had done this on my big dragon as well uh the uh, uh caridus corruptus whatever crundus i think his name is i i'm terrible with stormcast names and here in the orange part i use a uh, a bit of the uh, Griffhound orange, uh, as you can see here, just to uh, to add that bit more uh, color and variation to uh, the orange orange scales as well. Um, and I mean, this is the first time I tried this technique. Uh, I don't know if this is actually sort of <laughs> a defined technique or whatever, um, but it is the first, first time I tried painting like this. And I think you could do it with all sorts of color combinations. And uh, um, I mean, now that I have, uh, you know, figured out uh, that I really like painting like this, I, I think I am going to, you know, try all sorts of things and all sorts of color combinations and just having a, a, a lot of fun with it. Um, I'm really tempted by the new uh, Chaos Space Marines and trying to see if I can paint an entire army like a sort of stained glass window looking. <laughs> that would be, <laughs> I mean, that, uh, it would be, I, I mean, I would probably have a finished army by 2050, but it would be, you know, really fun. <laughs> um, and uh, here you can see, well, not the exact, not exactly the finished results, but sort of, you know, the wings and the the membranes of the wings are uh, finished at least. Um, and and I, I like it. Uh, I think it looks fun. I think it looks, you know, bright and it pops, uh, which is uh, everything I want in uh, in a dragon army. Uh, here you can see my big dragon, the uh, Krondus or... Uh, yeah, Krondus, I think. Krond I don't know. Uh, you can see him here. I did not do the exact same thing on the wings, but uh, it was just to give you an idea of the sort of um, colors of the wings uh, combined with uh, the rest of the color scheme for for the dragons, because the smaller dragons will be painted in the in the same color scheme. So uh, you know the yellow, uh, orange, pink wings, and then predominantly. Uh, blue, pink, and a bit of green for the rest of the body. So, uh, so that's uh, that's the color scheme I'm going for. And then I have decided to paint the uh, the riders a uh, riders in um, a sort of toned down black color, just to make sure that they don't uh, take away uh, your attention from the dragons, because the dragons are the stars, I think, uh, as as they should be. So this is what I wanted to show you in this uh, tutorial and if you have any comments or questions or anything please leave them in the, in the comment section below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Um, also if you have uh, any suggestions for paint schemes you'd like me to try out or you know some models you would like to see my take on you're also more than welcome to write that as well. Um, if you want to follow uh, my painting projects, you are of course also welcome to follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter as Dyson Demons. And you can also find uh, the Dyson Demons showroom on Facebook, where we have a really nice supportive little community where you can, uh, you know, it's a group so you can upload your photos and, uh, you know, ask about, yeah you know, tips and tricks or any sort of thing. Uh, and I think it's really cool and really uh, friendly and positive. So come join us there as well if you feel like it. So uh, thank you so much for watching this one, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.